Hi everyone, my name is Elaine, and today I'm going to be both summarizing and reviewing the 26th novel in Terry Pratchett's Discworld series, Thief of Time. Starting with the summary. Lady Maria Legine arrives in Jeremy Clarkson's shop and asks him to produce the first truly accurate clock. He isn't sure how it would be possible to do so. Susan, now a teacher, receives a summons from her grandfather. She ignores it. The history monks are meant to ensure that tomorrow takes place. Two of their number come up with a plan to deal with Lud, a troublesome novice. Lady Legine sends Jeremy and Igor to serve as his assistant. Jeremy decides to construct a glass clock. Lutze agrees to the abbot's request to teach Lobsang Lund. Lobsang is surprised he is to be Lutze's apprentice. Susan reluctantly goes to see her grandfather who informs her that the auditors have returned and that the future has changed. After one o'clock next Wednesday, there is nothing. Just one o'clock next Wednesday, forever and ever. No one will live, no one will die. That's on page 96. The glass clock, which once trapped time, is being rebuilt. Death wants Susan to do something about it since he has other business to attend to. Death informs Susan that time fell in love with a mortal and had a son. Someone mostly mortal. Someone like you. On page 103. Lutze notices a time leak. Lobsang fixes the issue. Afterward, Lutze realizes that the glass clock is being rebuilt and informs the other history monks. The abbot gives Lutze permission to take his apprentice to Ink Pork for training purposes. Lutze knows the glass clock is being constructed there. Lutze and his apprentice, who is both skilled at manipulating time and can stop time, head to Ink Pork. Igor follows Lady Legine out of Jeremy's shop following a routine check-in. He realizes she moves like someone unused to wearing skin, on page 177. Igor watches her turn into an alleyway and then transform into a gray hooded robe. Lady Legine reports to the other auditors. She was a creation based off Leonard of Quorum's painting, Woman Holding Ferret, who had been sent to get Jeremy to construct the glass clock so that they could stop time and make the world a tidier place. She explains that she wishes to keep her current human form for the sake of ease, that their plan is going according to plan. Lady Legine does not mention that she is experiencing thoughts that don't appear to be her own. Igor wonders if they can trust Lady Legine and tries to speak to Jeremy about it. He doesn't seem interested in listening. Igor has Lady Legine followed and gets the sense that she is up to something even though she is simply living life to the fullest, going to the opera, art galleries, etc. As the glass clock nears completion, Igor grows increasingly uneasy. Death informs Susan that Lutze has an apprentice whom he cannot feel or sense. He is the one. That's on page 215. Binky will take her to the child. Lady Legine has been sabotaging Jeremy's progress. She has been experiencing humanity, has begun developing feelings for him, and he for her. The auditors decide that she will be accompanied to Jeremy so that matters can be resolved. Jeremy finishes constructing the glass clock. It just needs a jump start. Lady Legine hurls a hammer at the glass clock. An auditor keeps the hammer from smashing the clock. Despite Lady Legine's warning, Jeremy begins the process of starting the clock. Lutze and his apprentice arrive in Ink Morpork where Lobsang was once a member of the Thieves' Guild. They race through a thunderstorm toward the glass clock, but are too late. Time stands still. Susan meets Lobsang. She insists that they need to find the clockmaker. Lutze meets the fifth horseman of the apocalypse, Ronnie. Lady Legine rescues Susan and Lobsang from a group of auditors. Susan is surprised by Lady Legine's actions, but the auditor no longer knows what she is, only that she is everything an auditor should not be, on page 321. Lady Legine realizes they must be there to destroy the clock. She thinks the clockmaker might know how to stop it, but he was hurt in the fight. Susan reveals that the clockmaker and Lopsang are brothers. A memory reveals that Nanny informs Susan that time gave birth to twin boys. Susan informs Lopsang that his mother is time and that she had lied. The clockmaker isn't Lopsang's brother. He's Lopsang and so is Lopsang. Both of you are you, on page 327. Susan's memory of speaking with Nanny about the birth explains, I always thought the twins is two little souls born once, not one born twice. That's on page 327. Lobsang and Jeremy vanish. They turn into slivers of blue light. Susan and Lady Legine arm themselves with chocolate to fight the auditors. Susan and Lady Legine, now known as Unity, rescue Lutze from a group of auditors. Susan, Lutze, Unity, and the four horsemen of the apocalypse fight the auditors. The fifth horseman, Ronnie, aka Chaos, Rides out. Chaos joins the fight. Lobsang takes over being time for time and shatters both history and the glass clock. Lobsang repairs history and sets the world to rights. He vanishes. The remaining auditors die in their dreams. Unity commits suicide by jumping into a vat of chocolate. Just like the other auditors, she was unable to handle the sensory overload. Susan returns to teaching, and that's the end of the novel. Now, on to my book review. I thought that beginning the chapters in which time wasn't standing still with tick or some slight variation was a nice touch since the novel revolves around time. I also thought it was interesting to see how Pratchett ties the idea that history repeats itself into the novel's current timeline by having legacies carry out similar actions to their ancestors and having old actors reprise their roles. For example, Lutze failed to stop the first glass clock and now he and his apprentice must stop the construction of the second, but they ultimately fail too. Another example would be the Igor who helped Jeremy to construct the glass clock. He is the grandson of the Igor who helped the mad scientist build the first glass clock in Uberwald. I thought it was interesting to see Lady Legine develop feelings, including some for Jeremy, as she experiences humanity and questions her actions, which ultimately leads her to turn on the other auditors. 
Her efforts to draw out the clock's construction as she explores these new experiences felt as though they had a certain weight to them as well. It's clear that she's an individual experiencing these things for the first time, and watching her experience these things through a fresh set of eyes is intriguing. At the same time, she clearly wants more time to do a lot of things because she simply doesn't understand them and wants to experience them as much as possible. But this is overwhelming for her and ultimately leads to her demise. The contrast, though, of her being this individual experiencing things for the first time, which we often associate with the young, and an individual who simply wants to live life to the fullest and have as many experiences as possible, something we often associate with older individuals, is intriguing. Forcing her to undergo this transformation from logical to illogical, to experience self-doubt in an identity crisis as she essentially rapidly goes through the human life cycle, was definitely something that drew me to this character and seemed like a nice touch given how this novel's plot surrounds time. The fact that lightning was needed to jumpstart the clock was reminiscent of Frankenstein, in which lightning was necessary to breathe life into an entity. It is important to note, however, that this novel used lightning to end all time, while Frankenstein, as I mentioned before, used it to bring something to life, to begin a new story. Finally, I am over the orphans of import thing that is horribly overdone in both literature and film. Jeremy and Lapsang were both foundlings, orphans adopted by some of Ink Morpork's guilds. Jeremy by the clockmakers and Lapsang by the thieves. I think I would have preferred a more creative backstory for these two individuals as opposed to something that we have seen time and time again. So overall, I gave this book a 3.1 out of 5 star rating. And there you have it, my summary and review of Terry Pratchett's Thief of Time. If you like what you saw here today, please give me a thumbs up, smash that like button until it's blue, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought not only of my review, but of this book if you read it. Subscribe, ring that bell so you'll know what's up, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye guys!